opens were just like really bad attempts to to warm open, I guess. <laughs> Like, that's how we got to the fucking, I don't want any dick pics and all this other stuff. Like, we were just trying to start and we oh, couldn't. that reminds me. Uh, I keep getting photos of Richard oh. Nixon. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, shit, I've been getting a ton of dick pics. <laughs> They're so uh, tiny. I was, <laughs> I was like, oh, God, this whole time and only now you're telling me? I've gotten like two or three emails of um, Richard Nixon. Shout out to everyone that sent me Richard Nixon, by the way. There was actually one. Okay, so I'm one of those people that I Google my name to see what people are talking about me. Uh, talking, uh, whatever. It's research. And, um, I, yeah, research, you know, because, you know, that's ethical, I guess. And I found uh, some guy on the Dragon Age Discord talking about like, oh, I, I said her Richard Nixon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but you're like one of like 10 who's already done that. Yeah, any uh, Richard Simmons, any... Uh... Uh, no, it's always Richard Nixon. It's, and it's always the same photo. It's like mm. when you Google Richard Nixon and it's like the first image that tricky pops dick. up. <laughs> I know. I've had some people, I think, download it and then attach it. Some people just link to the damn thing. It's really funny. Anyway. Oh, how interesting. I feel like people could switch that up a little bit. Maybe a little bit of Dick Grayson. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lord. See, now we're talking about it, and I'm going to get even more, like, emails. Like, my, my poor... There's there's actually people who legitimately email me about things, like, that are interesting, but <laughs> unfortunately, the dick pics get, get responses. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Um, it has been a busy week uh, for you. Yeah. You've got... Um... You have the the newest uh, the newest feature film uh, from oh, Katie Gilda's <laughs> which just released. I teased like I really I, I teased you a bit on Twitter, but it was really fucking good. Um, well, thank you. I thought it was brilliant. I, I was honestly like, oh, okay, she's gonna cover you know kind of the, some of the same stuff that we've been talking about, and you brought out a whole new material that I that I did, wasn't aware <laughs> of. And then like um, I know you had some help on this with getting the model extracted, et cetera, for the Dragon Age yes. Two Lyrium Idol. Like looking at that up close, and I'm like, holy shit, this is what a if you're gonna be a YouTube channel that focuses on one thing, which is what you do with Gilderthal, and it's like yeah. this is the level of coverage you want like i wish this existed and maybe it does and i just haven't found it i wish this existed for everything right like i wish this existed for assassin's creed i wish this existed for you know fallout i know there's some really good fallout channels out there but um mm -hmm. yeah just props to you i thought it was a great video well thank, thank again huge shout out to andros teeny dyna miles and padme 4000 for helping me out for that um and teeny andros teeny i call teeny um, was my contact for that, and she just did an amazing job, and I thank her very much. <laughs> but yeah, um, I also kind of like, I don't know, now that it's out there and over, I keep thinking of things I could have added. Like, I could have, like, tried to get, like, the sword model and talk about that, because I mm. guess that's important now. But, like, I didn't think about it at the time. Um, and, like, there's, like, little things, like, maybe I could have talked about that, because it's, like, slightly relevant, but then I'm like, but that's also slightly relevant. I don't know. I... I don't know. I'm glad people liked it, but like the the worst thing is I could have made it a lot longer. <laughs> oh, that's it's always the worst thing. Oh my that, god. That that is always the worst thing. Um but yeah, it it's it's been crazy. I kind of feel do you feel like we've said everything that could be said about this that needs to be said about it? Oh, yeah. I I I think what I talked about in the video was the major stuff. And maybe there's like little tiny things that might s slip beneath the cracks. Like, I, I think everything that can be found has been found already. I don't think there's going to be, like, some epiphany. Like, oh, my God, he, no one referenced the idol of Gilgamesh or whatever the yeah. fuck. Like, I don't <laughs> well, Gilgamesh, there, I don't know. <laughs> there's, I, there, the fuck is Gilgamesh? There is something to be said, and, and you mention this often in many of your videos, is that there's essentially an infinite number of what-ifs. I mean, if you wanted to take all of the stretch theories, you could talk about that forever and you could read too much into everything. But I think as far as the stuff that has reasonable evidence to at least throw out there, I think uh, mm -hmm. I think you've covered it. And uh, yeah, I just want to say, I mean, we've we've sort of given our constructive feedback, if you will, at various times for the marketing on, on Anthem and uh, and for the marketing value that you can pull out of a 30 second teaser trailer. People lost their mm -hmm. shit on Twitter Folks like us were doing live streams the night of, and coverage has continued to abound on theories about the Dragon Age 4 trailer. 
um, even in some mainstream stuff. Anyway, I, I just think fucking EA Bioware deserve props if you're go- if you're only going to do a very minimal, simplistic thirty second teaser trailer. Holy shit, they got a lot of mileage out of that thing. Oh, they did. Yeah, <clears throat> props to them. Which, uh, which the topic of today. Let's g- segue into this. Mm. Um, you thought it would be interesting, and I think it's a great idea, is if we look towards, um, specifically Dragon Age Inquisition is what I was looking for, um, theories about those trailers and see what ended up being true and what ended up just being a load of shit. Yes, yes, (laughs) because it's always fun to look back and see this exact same sort of thing happening. How, How right did people get it? Which, by the way, I'm absolutely dreading when the game comes out. And, like, that one-hour movie I made, everyone's like, N- none of this is uh, applicable. This is all. <laughs> That's still well put <laughs> together. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, For, it, it at least has a good shelf life of, until the game comes out. That's the best <laughs> I can say. Which might be um, a long time. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. Now, caveats, <laughs> okay. right? Like, I guess we, we're both going to – we both have caveats, right? You were not – neither one of us was doing YouTube, and neither one of us mm. was even – really paying attention at the time like we weren't in the fandom or at least not looking at inquisition very closely in the lead up i did not even know dragon age existed at this point in my life (laughs) so yeah when i this is definitely i I had to like go back do some digging uh a lot of digging uh filter out a lot of google searches like it it was it, it was kind of hard to find um which i will also say as a quick rant one reason it's hard to find is that if you look up dragon age inquisition trailer theories a lot of stuff for the dread wolf rises come up because they're just calling it dragon age inquisition 2 or something mm-hmm. like that yeah. so what, what you have to look for is what the fans were calling it back then which at the time was dragon age 3 and if i, I also looked up some trespasser theories um the, you have to look up wolf hunt or egg hunt because that was what people were calling trespasser a uh, base off of witch hunt from the dragon age origins right 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 so um, if, if you want to do this on your own, you really have to know what people were calling it. And that's going to be your best bet of looking up older theories. Yeah, and it's, um, it, it's tricky uh, to do that. Yeah, and I was, I was a big Dragon Age fan already. I loved Origins. I loved Dragon Age 2. I've, I've been a Bioware hardcore fan for a long time. And uh, we were talking before we started recording. I can't remember exactly why. Um, I think I had just maybe started, uh, I had stopped doing games coverage from a blogging standpoint, etc. around maybe a year or so before Inquisition came out. And so I just kind of unplugged from gaming for a while until like two weeks before Inquisition came out. I was not paying attention to the lead up or the hype or the trailers really at all. And that seems so bizarre and unusual because I love Bioware games so much. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, I'm also kind of piecing this together retroactively. <clears throat> so um all right i have a a, a, a decent list um so I, I will say that while looking back um it's kind of interesting to see how journalism has changed in the four years because like maybe it exists but i had a, a hot, really hard time finding it um there was not that many articles discussing like the breakdowns of the trailers and what they could mean um, I, I had a real hard time finding those. Uh, what I actually found more of um, off the release of the Dragon Age Inquisition trailers was people saying like, okay, this is a trailer. And then they, they would like fucking verbally describe what was in the trailer, which is like, okay, great. Thanks for this piece of journalism. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, and then they would just go on to speculate if Dragon Age Inquisition would be a piece of shit like Dragon Age 2. Oh, That wow. was a majority of what I found. It really was. Uh, up until um, the, like, playtest started getting out. And even then, it was like, but will it have repeating stuff? What is this too much? Right. Blah, blah, blah. Like it, they were very critical of the game coming out, um, which... <laughs> What I fucking loved is uh, one on the uh, first tra- teaser for Inquisition. There was, I think, it was a Kotaku article, basically saying those things. I just scrolled down to the comments, and then there was like one guy on there that was like, "Oh, I bet this is gonna be a mobile game." I'm like, "Well, at least times haven't changed." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, first of all, it's hilarious that that guy thought it was gonna be a mobile game. Um, you know, I find it so interesting that you can sort of put that snapshot in time and that everyone would have been focused on Dragon Age 2. That seems mm-hmm. so weird in retrospect. Um, I hate to, I hate to diverge, but can I diverge real quick? Oh, this, go for this it. This makes me think of something where in the Marvel Universe, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, after Iron Man 2 came out, 
Um, I don't know if people remember Iron Man 2. Uh, it wasn't very good. <laughs> it had whiplash <laughs> in it. Uh, it. It wasn't too great. But after Iron Man 2 came out, there was all of this sort of like, oh, what's going to happen with the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And is is this going to be the end? And it's just like, of course, you look back at that now after all the fucking Avengers movies and Infinity Wars and all this other stuff. And it, that just seems so, like such a ridiculous opinion. And also, also, this is the key thing. If you watch all of these movies together, Iron Man 2 is so, it's so much better. It, it's not that the content of it is any different, but when you accept it as just sort of a divergence or like a piece of a whole, Iron Man 3 is also kind of like that as well. It's not a great standalone movie, but it is a great piece of Tony Stark's story nestled in between the Avengers movies. Mm-hmm. It's essentially almost like a two and a half hour episode of a show kind of a thing. It would be bad if that was the whole thing, but it works really well as a piece of the saga. Dragon Age 2, to me, is that thing, where if you were looking for it as being the follow-up to Origin sort of on its own, it doesn't have the same scope, the same breadth, but if you look at it as a connective piece setting up Inquisition, it's fucking brilliant. And it, as we see in the, the trailer so far, it sounds like it's going to be the same for Dragon Age 4. So. Yeah. Which it, I I don't know anything about Iron Man two, so I don't know if, if this is equivalent there. But like, there are fans of or like I, I feel like you, what your favorite game kind of describes how you feel about the series. If your favorite game is Dragon Age Origins, you only like Dragon Age Origins. You don't like the rest of them. At the end. Mm, if your favorite yeah. game is Dragon Age two, you will like verbally attack anyone who says anything bad about Dragon Age two. Like Dragon Age two fans are fucking ride or die. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm becoming, well, I, I am one of them. I became one of them. Um, yeah, so I, I can kind of understand that now. It, it's so misunderstood. It is so misunderstood. Mm-hmm. So, I, which, here's the thing. I know people are, like, listening, like, all right, you know, apolog- Bioware apologists. It has its faults. L- let me tell you, Dragon Age 2 can drag in its moments. But I think the, the story of it is, like, what really shines and what has really made it, like, a little diamond in the rough. And it really is a shame, like, if that game was just given another year of development, what it could have been. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, do we, okay, let, let, let's talk, let's talk some trailer theories. So, um... Uh, let's go over uh, kind of my pool of what I kind of found on the subreddit and what I also found on, um, I, I don't know what it is because I don't really, really fuck with Dragon Age Wiki that much, but I guess it has a forum attached to it. So that, and unfortunately, a lot of theories were talked about and a lot of things were linked to the Bioware, no, so, Bio, the, BioWare social network forms, the BSN. Yes. But that's all gone now. So, now like, fun. all yeah. of that, it's it's gone. I can't read it anymore. So I think a lot of the fun theories are on there, but we can't find it anymore. Anyway, so the things I could found, um, a lot of people were talking about who or what the Elder One was. We now know it is Corypheus. There were a couple of people to correctly guess that it was Corypheus, really just based, I guess you could hear his voice in one of the trailers. I don't actually know what trailer they were talking about. But um, so some people correctly guessed that it was Corypheus based on a couple of factors, but there were some who did not. Um, <laughs> so um, one of my favorite ones uh, was I, in one, one of the trailers. It has a scene from uh, Champions of the Just, which, as we know now, is the Inquisitor tries is is um, almost possessed by an envy demon and you go through the Inquisitor's mind and you meet like the envy demon as the Inquisitor and they're fighting. And um, someone had a fairly long theory talking about how the Envy Demon in that thing was actually the Elder One. And the Elder One is a corrupted version of your player character from another evil dimension. (laughs) It's basically basically Salos for the Inquisitor. uh, Yeah, and, like, that is so out there. And, like, knowing what I know now of, like, the games, like, even in, like, that time period, it doesn't make sense. But they were ride or die for this, and I love it because it is just so wacky. (laughs) Can you you fucking imagine the outcry if the Elder One was (laughs) your player character from another evil dimension? I just wonder, too, also, like, thinking back to the idea that it's all sort of it, it's a moment in time. Is that is that person theorizing that? Because if this is before Inquisition, if it's in the lead up, it's somewhere in early 2014 or late 2013. So I'm assuming 
that person is maybe being influenced somewhat by the Mass Effect 3 DLC, uh, Citadel DLC, where there's a clone Ooh. of Shepard. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Because like, they're thinking, oh, well, Bioware already did this. Fast yeah, Bi- so Bioware's all about that. clones now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the newest trend in the Bio world. <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining this guy is Alex Jones for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn all the companions gay. I like beer and apple pie and clones. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm American. All right, we'll leave Alex Jones alone. Oh, fucking Alex Jones. Okay. I mean, look, you should. <laughs> okay, Katie, I'm sorry. Before I say it, I'm joking. I want you um, to know this. You shouldn't no, make no. fun of Alex Jones. As many oh, no. as many theories as you come up with, you're the Alex Jones of Dragon Age. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's what's you, okay. I'm just saying, you know, that's what your April oh, Fool's no. Day episode has to be, right? <clears throat> oh, no. You've got to do Alex. You've got to do Alex Jones. <laughs> I don't think my throat can handle doing that uh, uh, f- fucking voice for like over a th- 30 you seconds. you got to do what if, what if Alex Jones does a Dragon Age Theory video? Oh, my God. That would be awful. I mean, my other dra- April Fool's one was awful, too, but that's even more awful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's get back to it so uh (laughs) that's one theory Uh, some of the more like sane theories that i i thought were actually pretty decent um one was someone suggested that the elder one is actually the dragon in the trailer because they showed the like corrupted red lyrium dragon or whatever whatever it is um which i think that's close yeah that's pretty close then someone took that and said like oh well maybe the dragon is one of the old gods and you're like oh okay that's then well, it would a be blight. a blight, yeah. so, which, like, in the game, that's what they were talking about, and, like, so that kind of makes sense that they would get that theory, because, like, even the people in the game, are they like, oh, is it an old god, is this another blight, which, okay, uh, that makes sense. So then they were like, okay, then the old god uh, was actually awoken by Corypheus, and then Corypheus and this old god are leading another blight, and that's what you're fighting. That also makes sense. Like, I, it's not what happened, but I think it makes sense. So... That's close. I wonder how excited that person was in the first act of Inquisition going like, I'm right. I'm right. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> until the game t- tells you, like, no, you're not right. That is not the old god. This Corypheus is going for himself. This is a power play by him. He's not being influenced by yeah. Dumat, which, like, it, 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 interesting enough, like, it's, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I can only imagine that guy was just so excited. And then when that happens, he's like, fuck, <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or I mean, or I mean, if it was me, I'd be even more excited, right? Because then that the the turn of the plot where it's not that that would be even more satisfying mm-hmm. to me, right? Because it's just like I thought about mm-hmm. it logically enough to be close. Even the mm-hmm. characters in the game were thinking this way. So then the fact mm-hmm. that it's not like I would just feel really, uh, I'd feel really engaged with the story even more at that point if it was me. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I know there was a lot. There was actually a lot of discussion of people because, um, like, they, they apparently the only tra- the trailers only said like the elder one, the elder one, the elder one, the elder one. So people were wondering what the elder one was, mm. um, and a lot why a lot of people did guess Corypheus. There was actually a lot of people who were really upset about the idea that it would be Corypheus, saying it was like um, not a satisfying answer. It was too obvious. It was um, it wouldn't be fun because he was a lackluster villain in Legacy, or he's dead, so he would. It wouldn't happen, which I will say, even in Legacy, they kind of hinted at, like, this this motherfucker ain't dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, There's a reason yeah, why they but... locked him away and not killed him. Well, like, well, even that, like, if if you look at the cutscene, which it's so obvious now, but back then maybe it was easily missed. When you're talking to Corypheus for the last time, and he, he knows he's about to die, you can actually see whatever warden you chose, Larias or whatever, Janica... Uh, to like do like this weird like wibbly wobbly thing in the background because they're literally being possessed at that that time frame and then you kill Corypheus and then when you talk to Janica or Larias whoever you chose they have this like th- they say something so ominous that makes it sound like that's not what they would say that sounds like somebody else so like it is so obvious on hindsight yeah that Corypheus possessed them yeah. and was it became them that it's almost painful but um, people didn't didn't want to didn't like it. By the way, to hype up Dragon Age Two, so this is becoming like a Dragon Age Two episode. But fuck it, it's it's <laughs> the, it's the it's the title in Bioware's catalog that needs the most love. It's probably the most underrated game Bioware's ever done, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, 
how fucking brilliant is that that it was that it was woven in there from that standpoint um from from the dlc of the last game they set up the villain for inquisition they set it up well in my opinion Mm -hmm. um and i don't know like i just i overall i have to compliment bioware's dlc strategy i guess it probably started with the arrival in uh in two mass effect 2 where they started setting up the next game with the last piece of major dlc of the most recently released game Mm-hmm. And just like holy crap, but yeah. Now that now that you you talk about that, everything with Caripius was, you know, was so obviously leading towards Inquisition. I don't know. I just think that <clears throat> that strategy and it goes all the way through with Trespasser is it's really brilliant. I wish more titles did that. Which I mean, I don't know much about video games outside of Bioware, so maybe they're there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe no, a lot of no, not as much. I mean, yeah, not as much. <clears throat> So um, another Elder One theory that I found, um, which this is kind of similar to what's going on with Dragon Age uh, 4 speculations, was that the Elder One was one of the Forbidden Ones because it ends with one. Get it? <laughs> um, <clears throat> but wouldn't one of the Forbidden Ones be one of the Elder Ones? Because we, did, we did, uh, at that point in time, we didn't actually have a lot of the um, the names of the Forbidden Ones. Um, Gelderon was specifically, uh, and Darenthal was specifically... Uh, from Dragon Age Inquisition, the only one we had was Inaris from the, uh, for, which which is mentioned in the novel, um, uh, the Masked Empire. Everything else was that, that was Inquisition. So yeah, at that point, people only knew one of them was called Inaris, and that was about it. Mm-hmm. So, which speaking of Masked Empire, another big theory was I guess at one point it shows um, Morrigan in conflict with uh, not Felisan with Abelos, uh mm-hmm. during the Willisaro scene. And so people are going absolutely crazy. One, because it's Morgan. So what is Morgan doing with the elves? So people think like she was siding with the elves. She was in charge of the elves for some reason. Um, Kind of like when uh, in The Calling, uh, sorry, not The Calling, The Stolen Throne, Flemeth was like living with Dalish elves. Um, Because at this point, any elf with a tattoo on their face was Dalish. So they thought like, oh, is she with the Dalish for some reason? Who are these really fancy Dalish guys? What's going on? One person was suggesting that I saw this one a couple places that Obelisk was actually Felison, which would make sense. I, I think that one's pretty reasonable. Like Felison has something weird going on, so of course he would be with more again. Granted, we do think Felison is quote unquote dead, even but even that's a theory. So I yeah, that I don't think that one's as outrageous as, you know, the Inquisitor is the elder one from another evil dimension or whatever. <laughs> um <laughs> That one's my favorite. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that was... I, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where, like, it totally makes sense in this time period that someone would suggest that. But it's still wrong. <laughs> and, uh, no, I didn't see anyone... Like, obviously, who's going to um, suggest the Well of Sorrows? Like, no one would think of that. Because there's nothing hinting at to it. So, I, I, I think that's one reason I would... Like, when you suggested this, I wanted this episode. Because so many theories and what is can come out. But there are things that we just don't know that's going to be the reason for this. Th- if they made a game and we were able to predict the entire plot based on old clues, we would be disappointed. So, of course, you're going to pull out new things out of their butt that <laughs> we haven't heard of before. Which which is why it's really hard to do theories on these tra- teaser trailer videos. Because there's just going to be things we don't know about at all. Well, that's what's exciting, right? Like, there has to be missing pieces. If there aren't missing pieces, we would be able to correctly, as you're saying, we'd be able to correctly predict everything. And that would kind of take the fun out of it. It would, yeah. Um, Another, so uh, I I don't want to, like, so when I, after looking up all the articles and not finding much, I then went to YouTube. Um, Again, as I went to YouTube, uh, people talking about the trailers, like as as like I did with the teaser for an hour. Um, most people were just really talking about how Dragon Age Two was a piece of shit. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, great. Um, but the only one that had reliable um, uh, a piece by piece breakdown of the trailers is actually Gamer MD that I found, um, and she she's still doing stuff. She actually just released a video on um, the teaser that was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but on one uh, episode that she had, uh, I think it was on the first trailer. Yeah, they all kind of blend together now. Um, she was talking a lot about, I don't think she believed it, but she was reporting on it, which is fine. I do that. Um, how the Inquisitor 
Um, which at, at this point, the, the trailer she's talking about, the only thing you see is the Inquisitor and the Fade, and they're standing up and they look kind of bew- bewildered, like, what the fuck am I? And it is a very male figure. So um, what she was talking about was that the Inquisitor was the old god baby from Origins. And that's how it makes them special, and that's why they were... I don't even think the mark was shown. No, the mark was shown, at least in the promotional image, but not the uh, yeah. the trailer, I think. But yeah, apparently that was a really big theory, that Kieran, who we know to be Kieran now, would come back as the Inquisitor. Because at that point, we didn't know that uh, the time frame between uh, Origins and Inquisition. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that is one of those... It's, a, it's an outlandish theory... But if you really think about what the explanation is for how the Inquisitor receives the mark, it is essentially happenstance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that they were necessarily destined to have any sort of involvement with these, you know, the affairs that sort of decide the fate of the world. It was just sort of they were at the at the conclave. And so, yeah, I mean, again, that that Inquisitor is the old God baby theory sounds really outlandish. But if you were committed to the idea that they had to be someone special, which turns out they don't have to be. But if that's what you were thinking, it's not a bad theory. Mm-hmm. But like, I, 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 I guess my one like trying to put my mind back in that time frame, I don't see how people would. It, I don't see how that would make sense, even in that time frame, because at least the books that were, which, like, Asunder came out in, like, 2011 or something like that. Like, it, you know, the books were out yeah. for quite a while by that time. Um, the, they had already set up the Mage Templar War. So were they thinking that the Mage Templar War had been going on, that on for, long. like, 10 years? Yeah, yeah, that's true. The whole thing is a tie. The, the, the main um, things that would disprove it would be if you knew the time frame, which it seems like, based on the release of the books, you should be able to piece it together at least. And then the other thing is, did we know at that point that you were going to be able to once again pick from different um, different races? I don't know about different races, but they they do know that like they did confirm gender at least that I know of. Um, which like we the the old god baby was confirmed as male in witch hunts. So to have like they they already knew like if uh... you would be able to create a character. It would um, well ha- have to be retconned a little. Bit. Yeah, I was gonna say that to me would be a little bit easy to retcon. Whereas like the race thing, we know that the old god baby would have had to have been human, so there's mm-hmm. there, that would have also erased it. Yeah, I give. I don't know if I'm gonna grade the Inquisitor could have been the old god baby. I give it maybe like a C plus. It's not bad, but there were some things that would have allowed you to kind of rule it out or get come close to ruling it out. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, do you like? Do you have one that you have? <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what would you grade an F so far? I want to know. Oh, the fucking clone. <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> the fucking. Yeah, I fucking rate that one an A just because I, I enjoy it so much. <laughs> I would love uh, to see just, the, the, the only way that would give you worse is if it was actually the clone Shepard from the Citadel Three DLC. Mm. <laughs> like he just got pulled through a wormhole. Uh. Oh god, this is like the space ferret all over again. Uh, it's like in reverse. Oh fucking okay, space ferret. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> hey, you should watch Codex added to get that reference. Clink. Okay. Um <clears throat> So uh, that was pretty much all the stuff I found on Inquisition, I'll be honest. Uh so then I did well, is, is there anything else you want to say on Inquisition? Or uh No, not not anything else on like speculation or theory wise. No, not really. Okay. We can go on trespasser. Okay. So trespasser, that one I remember a little bit more because, like, I was, you know, by that time I fuck, I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in the race. I got, I'm in, I'm in there, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. all fucking excited about trespasser. Um, so one thing that I completely forgot about until I stumbled upon it. Uh, do you remember the trespasser leak? Oh, and name only. Honestly, I, I don't remember the contents of, it, but I remember people talking about it. So um, this actually happened with, uh, I think, Mass Effect Andromeda and the Descent DLC. And Trespasser. I, maybe maybe it happened with Joseph the Hackout. I can't remember. But um, I don't know if they still do this. I don't think they do. But EA used to um, put out, I guess, like surveys to, I, I don't even know who, so, so like investors or something like that, saying like, okay, he, w- without a title, here is just like a little blurb of something. Would you buy this at whatever price? And then you would say, definitely would buy. I probably wouldn't buy. Would, like, I, I would definitely not buy this. Something like mm-hmm. that. Um, and they came out, like, uh, the one I'm looking at here, this was for Trespasser. 
Um, it came out in June, which if you know anything about Trespasser, it came out in September. So this was before the trailer even came out. Um, and it essentially, like, uh, very accurately, because this thing is, ended up being uh, real. Mm-hmm. Um, do, you, do you want me to read out what it says? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. So it's, it's kind of short, so I'll just go through the whole thing. So having saved the world of Theodis by closing the breach, your next mission will determine the future of the Inquisition. Your mark suddenly glows, erupting with magic connection to the Fade. Assassins attack in shadow. An invasion of enemy begins. Win a race against time to face a great evil before it is too late. In this story-based expansion, playable after Dragon Age Inquisition, you'll embark on the last adventure with your team to confront the one who started it all. And then it had a, has a blurb of, like, test your metal against the Canary army, um, explore new things in Thetis, uncover secrets of the Fade, and prove your skill with new optional gameplay bow that challenges even more seasoned veterans. Um, uh, that's that's the trials they're talking about right there. But, um... <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. It's so weird that they just... That they made it so detailed. I feel like they could have not used the, um... Like, not talked about Thetis, not actually used the title of the game, and, like, could have done it in a generic way if they were just trying to do focus group type uh, surveying. It's so interesting that they, that, that they at that time, that they thought that that would just happen and not be leaked out. <laughs> yeah, really. And, like, they, they did it for, like, all the DLC and Andromeda. So, which, interestingly, they, they haven't done it with Anthem, and we haven't heard anything Dragon Age 4, so I guess they stopped doing this for this reason, because it just I, got I leaked mean, out too much. clearly, because I remember the one for Andromeda uh, a lot more, and that one, again, was 100% right. That ended up being exactly what it was. Hmm. So, at, at this point, like, which, uh, this was kind of, like, really deep into the fandom to see this, and, like, these things are so easily, like, faked. I don't know if I would trust anyone after this time frame of these that came out but i agree this has been the only leak that has actually been reliable anyway so before all this came out though there was a whole bunch of uh, which this never said the name trespasser anywhere so um what fan i think i mentioned this earlier but what fans were calling trespasser dlc was wolf hunter egg hunt because of witch hunt from whatever so um what i remember of the discussion of wolf hunt um, th- there was actually a lot of people who got s- like really damn close. Um, I to the point where like I remember playing Trespasser and like Solus tells us about his story and whatnot. I was like, oh yeah, didn't we know this? We, we know this. Where- where's the secret stuff? But in reality, I ha- was just reading a lot of fan theories, and they were theories that ended up being correct. Uh-huh. Um, I remember specifically um, there. Uh, I was really into this fan fiction called Looking Glass. And the writer of The Looking Glass had subscribed to uh, the theory that ended up being correct and wrote a whole um, fan fiction kind of based on it um, before we even knew it was accurate. And it ended up being accurate. And I remember, like, the next chapter that came out after that DLC was like, holy shit! (laughs) (laughs) I thought this was all going to be proven wrong, but it's right! Look at me now, bitches! (laughs) They were were so excited and I was happy for it. That's like the greatest fan fiction dream ever. Mm-hmm. To which I, to which you guys are asking, what what was all all speculation? We didn't know Solus made the veil at that point at all. That was completely a guess. The, the veil, even being man made, was completely a guess. Um, there was uh, speculation on like if Solus was actually kind of like kind of a good guy rather than str- strictly a bad guy. Because, like, up until Trespasser, the Dread Wolf was just, like, he locked away the good elven gods. Um, and, like, they're in, in, in Inquisition, there was a little bit of doubt of, like, Sola saying, like, he was, he was bitching about how bad the the gods were. So there, there was a little bit of hint there. But, like, he talked about, like, a war. And, like, there was all the stuff about, like, enslaving the Dwarven people that was hinted at. That was all a guess, completely. So th- there was a lot in Trespasser that actually was talked about beforehand that ended up being right um but some things that talked about that ended up being wrong (laughs) um uh there was a lot of people like a lot of people that thought we could talk solace down um and that trespasser would be us talking to solace and being like hey what you're doing is wrong and he goes vanan you are right (laughs) come with us into the sunset or alternatively stab him in the face (laughs) Well, no. Well, I guess this is all the Solus answers. This is what I, I saw. I was like, Vanon, come with me. Come destroy the world with me. And then Dragon Age 4 would be your Inquisitor and Solus destroying the world. Um, which apparently was something they talked about at Bioware, and they just decided like they wouldn't be able to do that um, from like a 
design standpoint, so they <laughs> they decided not to. But apparently that that was in the works. I would have honestly like I I know that would have become maybe untenable at some point, but I would have loved that. That would be such an amazing moment in a RPG series to see a former player character become an antagonist. I know it's super complicated and and, and logistically a nightmare, but like, oh my God, that would have been such a unique moment. Yeah, I I can totally see like the confusion of like the the developers that'd be like, people, people want this? What? what?" But like... (laughs) I, I I definitely would not have chosen it for a canon inquisitor, but like that would have been a fun option just to see what would have happened. Like, yeah, fuck it, why not? Like, I don't like the shems. Let's go for it, man. <laughs> let's just let's just the destroy shems. the world. Yeah. No, see, like the, the, the shems. <laughs> oh, that's what they say. Uh, <laughs> um, I like how in the Dragon Age community, like you know how the Harry Potter fans will call people muggles. <laughs> now, granted, oh. you're using shems accurately because you're talking about a a uh uh elven inquisitor and and so yeah. but i just mean like you could use it's like people say bastet from mass effect because oh. that's what that's the uh quarian <laughs> so, so non-dragon age fans are shims yeah i guess so maybe and maybe non-mass <laughs> effect fans are bastets hey hey michael hey michael <laughs> <laughs> don't don't call michael a shem don't call my future fellow podcast co-host a shem <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> he's the other half of the Michael Jordan podcast. <laughs> you don't need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that picked up. No. He's like, I don't, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, thank you for this. Uh, so, yeah, my husband's a shem. Uh, oh, I'm a, what was I guess? What I, I, got, I got completely confused. What were we talking about? Uh, Shems. Sh- um, no, no. Fuck, we were talking about us going off with Solus yes, and okay, so destroying the world. It's complete pipe dream. It, I don't even know that it fits tonally for the series, but because I like to speculate about things that totally aren't going to happen. <laughs> um, there's a moment in uh, the original Bioshock, um, which massive spoiler alerts for that game. If you haven't played it yet, it's, <laughs> it's a fucking decade old, but it has one of the best endings in the history of video games. So, Jesus Christ, if you haven't played it, it's your fault. Uh <laughs> Ending a Bioshock, you basically... Well, I'm not going to explain the whole thing. You basically find out you're not in control of yourself. And there's this mm-hmm. amazing gameplay moment. It's a first-person game. And there's never any cinematic cutscenes. You know, you're locked into the first-person perspective. Mm-hmm. And as you're confronting um, who you think is the antagonist, uh, there's a moment where you lose control of your player, right? You're, you're completely in the first-person perspective. And this, this person, who is also not really in control of themselves, not who they seem, says, kill me. Like, beat me to death. And you're just like, why would I do that? Like, I still need answers from you. But And the character just starts moving without you controlling them. And it's mm. absolutely, it's one of the coolest moments ever, especially locked into that first person. Like, you feel like you're trapped in your own body kind of thing. Go, How mm. fucking dope would it be if, like, you played the opening of Dragon Age 4 as the Inquisitor? And then at the moment when you switch to no longer be in control of that character and to go into control of a new character, like, outside of a cutscene, like, from the gameplay camera perspective, the Inquisitor just does something, like kills someone without you controlling mm-hmm. them. And then it goes into the cutscene and then you find out, like, all right, I'm done with the Inquisitor. I got to make a new character. Now the Inquisitor is a bad guy. That's, again, total pipe dream, but I just dream of, of like, unique moments like that in gaming popping up in, in Bioware games again. Hold on real quick. Yes? What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> okay, I guess not. No! <laughs> For sure, did, did you fucking Google it? <laughs> yeah, because it's Shem and Ham, and who are the who are the three sons? No, I think it's like the three sons of. I uh, it's don't worry about it. I call I called you uh, a, a mortal human, and that's insulting. Shem, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Shem was one of the sons of Noah in the Hebrew Bible, as well as in Islamic literature. Children of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphrax, Lud, and Aram. In addition, okay. This is better. This is so much better than Elven history. It's, yeah, it's real history. <laughs> oh god. Oh boy. Okay. Um. I okay. B- back to what you were talking about. I thought you were going to say. Um. 
the if the Inquisitor drank from the Well of Sorrows. And Solus is like, oh, do you want to come with me? If you drank from the Well of Sorrows, the Inquisitor would automatically say yes. Oh, like the, like on the dialogue wheel, it picks an option that you don't that you're not in control of. Yeah. That, okay, we talked about this once. Uh, uh, we talked about it in the, what was maybe it was the game changing ideas episode that we did. Um, oh, va- yeah, I vaguely remember. And that. And I was referencing the moment. There's a there's a moment in Mass Effect Two with Morinth. Um, if you don't have a high enough um, renegade or paragon, and she's a she's a uh, oh Jesus, what's the freaking term? <clears throat> the the Mordok Gakshi, yeah, or something uh, like that. Yardak Akshi, right? No, yeah, something like it's, it. It kind of sounds Arda, like that. Ardat Yakshi. There you go. Ardat Yakshi. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, and she's like brainwashing you, and if you don't have enough uh, uh, paragon or renegade points, you have to pick the like. Everything you say is right dialogue option. It's kind of like that, but I just think it would freak people out. Like they would think that their game was bugging out or something like that if you were on the mm-hmm. the dialogue selection screen and you just see it highlight an option that you're totally not wanting it to and select it. Like that would be crazy. That would be crazy, yeah. Because you'd be just yelling at your screen like, no, I didn't want that option. No, my game's bugged. <laughs> um, there are, I hate to. Uh, diverge just again but like moments uh, like that in other games have been amazing i don't know if you're aware of the metal gear solid thing that uh i think it was metal gear solid the first one where there's a character might there's be. a character that has the ability to control like physically control other people like puppet them uh-huh. and in order to defeat that boss fight you have to unplug your controller from the first controller slot which is what you would always plug it into on a ps1 if you were playing a single player and you have uh-huh. to plug it into the second controller slot Oh. And that's the only way to not be controlled by that boss and beat the fight. Like, just little shit like that I think is super fun. And you, I don't feel like we see that as much in games anymore. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit harder now that you have games that are made for so many different platforms. Like, nowadays, how the hell would you design that for a computer that would also work on an Xbox, you a PlayStation, and a Switch? You, yeah. you could not do stuff like that. Uh, on, well, yeah, you couldn't do stuff well, like well, that. Well, now there was technically stuff like that with uh, Over uh, not Overwatch, fuck uh, Undertale. Oh, I'm not familiar with Undertale. Und- Undertale. Uh, so I I didn't I didn't play the game. I just I just know of it because fucking Tumblr wouldn't shut up about it for ten years. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, uh, if you um, the the way it saves data was a little bit funky. So um, if you started a game. And then you kill the character because there, there's like this whole thing of like you're not supposed to kill anyone. You're supposed to be passive. Well, you can play it either way. But anyway, um, if you kill someone and then let's say you read online like, oh, don't don't kill people. It's much better that way. You go, oh, shit, I, I messed up. And then you delete the save file. You start again. The game will remember that you still killed someone. And at one point in the game, like it's going to mention like you thought we forgot. We did. Oh, we brilliant. know you killed someone in a past life. That's brilliant. So. Yeah, so in a way, it's a lot harder to get what they say. The I think it's called the true pacifist run. Like you really have to start at the beginning. You kind of have to know what you're doing going in, or get really lucky. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna fuck up. And like I, th- like the way to defeat the boss, you have to like do something with the files and like edit it in a way to like get the true ending. Like it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting how it does that. So like I, as much as I understand people don't like Undertale, it definitely had some really interesting gameplay mechanics to it, um, which which is which is great. So yeah, so, yeah, we got way off topic, but anyway, I, I love that. I, that that's <laughs> why the hell not? Um, you know, I I, I, ho- I hope to see you know little wrinkles like that in, in Bioware games in the future because I think they've got such creative writers and the fact that the fact that they are focused on making sure that narrative goes through all aspects of the game, including gameplay. I feel like that's that's something they should be leading leading in. Mm-hmm. Which is one thing, like, it, that would be so hard to predict, you know, doing, like, doing that. Like, we can't predict it. Which, like, okay, other Trespasser, uh, yes, I'm trying to get back yes, to the topic. Yes, yes. Other Trespasser things that ended up being uh, a whole bunch of bullshit. Um, a lot of people, um, when, when, they, when, they, when, you, when you see the trailer for Trespasser, like, the trailer is, like, you, like, jumping into a whole bunch of um, alluvians and, like, seeing different like the landscapes that you would eventually see in um a lot of people are like oh my god the alluvians are active like we didn't know that so people were having honest to god like discussions on who will activate the alluvians uh quite like this um people like well Briella did activate the alluvians in mast empire 
Um, so did she, like, turn him on for the Inquisitor and, like, she's letting the Inquisitor in, like, stuff like that? Is Morgan doing it? Because she does have power over an Alluvian, although, it, it, like, when we went into her Alluvian, things looked a lot different than what we, we see uh, in the trailer. So people are really confused about what that is. Um, ended up being that Solus just stole it from Briala, which I will admit, even now, is kind of like a lackluster answer. Because it's like, <laughs> well, the, the whole book of Mass Empire is just Briala getting the... Uh, the Alluvian control, and then, like, her losing control is one line from Solus in the, the Trespasser DLC, and, like, there's no, like, hint or anything that she's losing control or that she can't work it anymore. It's just yeah. suddenly, like, oh, Solus has it. Yeah, Solus, so. I mean, I don't know. Solus needs to have it, right? Like, I mean, for the overarching mm-hmm. story and the greater tension, like, it really should be in his hands. Mm-hmm. Which, it, uh, sometimes Bioware does, like, short stories or something, or, like, the comic run. Like, that would be a great comic run, or a short story to come out with. Like, how did Briala lose the Alluvians? Like, he said he had to override the magic personally. What does that mean? How? Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, what? What'd he do? <laughs> what what I want to know? So, which, who knows? Maybe that's actually a bigger deal than we know of, and they're going to be talking about that in Dragon Age 4. Like, maybe we will learn how to also override the magic personally. Like, I don't... I don't know. So. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember, like, any other trespasser theories that came out. I, I think most, for the most part, other than the people saying that, like, Solus isn't going to be the bad... Like, people really did not want Solus to be the bad guy. Uh, I think, well, I'd probably say Solus Man just really didn't want Solus to be the bad guy. Um, they wanted him to, like, be the misunderstood, like, oh, he left because of a good reason. He's not going to destroy the world. He's going to, like, come back with, like, a box of flower box of flowers. I guess it could be a box of flowers. Uh, flowers and, like, going, but no, and I left for a few years because I saved the world and now I'll be back and be together. Like, that's what they really wanted, um, which I think what we got was a lot better. Um, so much better. But, it's like, so much better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think more people honestly guessed kind of what would happen, though. Like, I think what happened in Trespasser was, for the most part, pretty well put together by fans. But so uh, which, I, I, was, go yeah, I was gonna say, so on that note, um, mm-hmm. I'll make a prediction, sort of, so, sort of, okay. sort of a prediction slash, I don't know if it counts as much as a prediction as a prescription of what I think should happen rather than necessarily mm-hmm. what I think will happen. Solus has mm-hmm. to die. Right, mm-hmm. like Solus has got—he has to die. Like, and and, and I'm not saying that because I don't—I love Solus as a character, but when I think about who he is and sort of what, what the setup of his mission is and how how both committed he is to it, but also in essence how wrong it is, and also mm-hmm. what's driving him to it, which is clearly like it's the plight of the elves, but it's also like the sorrow over the fact that he was essentially wrong for doing what he did. Right, like locking away the Evaneris and the Forgotten Ones were not um, that didn't cure the elves of their slavery. Right, they still ended up as slaves. Mm-hmm. Right, so he did this mm-hmm. terrible thing, and he's essentially wrong, and they're still plight and they're still suffering. And I kind of feel like his whole mission now at this point is, I'm going to fix this, even if I have to break everything. So mm-hmm. to me, the only the only way that that works is he he is so committed to that that he will not turn from the path and the player character or someone is going to have to kill him or Mm -hmm. he sets things in and i don't know how this is where it turns into rampant speculation he sets things in motion (laughs) in some way where it's too late to stop it and he has to be the one to sacrifice himself to stop it so that's the only redeeming solace aspect of it that there is is that you redeem him but then he realizes he's the one who has to sacrifice himself to stop it Mm -hmm. otherwise i don't think the story has thematic punch and that's totally subjective yeah. on my part. But if we get to have a happy soulless ending, I'm sorry. I know people think they want that, but that is not, that's not satisfying to me. Like, I want to see this dude suffer the consequences of the fact that he <laughs> keeps, like, seriously, like, the fact that this guy essentially was like, ah, oh, the elven gods aren't really gods. They're just powerful mages who think too highly of themselves. It's like, motherfucker, that's you, <laughs> mister. I'm going to create the veil and then I'm going to destroy the veil and, like, you know, which I will say, the game says that. Yeah, like, you know, he had to convince people he wasn't a god. Yeah, so uh, so like he has to face the consequences of that, or he has to take responsibility and essentially pay a price, even if he is sort of redeemed, quote unquote, at the last minute. Like the only way to truly redeem himself, I think, is going to be sort of sacrificing himself. Yeah, that's just my that's my take on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if that mm-hmm. happened for sure. 
I well, I guess now we're just getting into theories because I I, I, I want to say something now. But yes, go um, I, I for the most part, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I, I see if I could guess like a couple of outcomes. I don't have an exact number because I don't count these things out. OK, so answer number one, what you said, that's that's one option. I, option number two, which I think is extremely unlikely, but I think it could technically happen. There's some sort of compromise and that's going to be the happiest we get of Solas. He says like, all right, I'll back down if I could take down the veil in a very small area and like the elves live there or something, which even Ooh. that is like that, that is, that's the best we can hope for is a compromise. What I think is more likely is going to like for a quote unquote happy. I, we, we're, I, I think we're, the, I think the best Solas can offer, other than compromise, because I think that's highly unlikely, is a bittersweet one where we have to lock him away, and that's that's the he lives ending, is he gets locked away. Mm. Or, um, so okay, this is quite this is a, quite a story, so hear me out here. Um, Solas and Cole have a lot of banter um, that references real world media. One of the media is a movie called Meet Joe Black, which I actually loved before I played this game. Do you know of that movie? Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Great. I love that movie. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, it's essentially like a movie where uh, a girl meets, this is highly simplistic, go watch the movie, it's actually really good, a girl meets a guy in a bar, and they're like, oh, a, a coffee shop, I think, and they, they, you know, they have fun or whatever. He leaves, he gets run over, <laughs> which is a hilarious scene, actually, and then he gets possessed by death, and like some sort of like... Um, shit happens and essentially death finds this girl again and she's like oh I recognize you and he goes oh my god I have no idea who you are and they fall in love Mm -hmm. and at the end he wants to take her with he wants to take her with him back where you know to the the plane and she gets scared and frightened and he realizes to it he I'm talking too much he realizes he's doing a bad thing and says actually never mind I have to go from now on, you'll just get the guy at the coffee shop, and then he comes back, and now it's the guy she met at the coffee shop. And so it's not really who she fell in love with, but it's someone who looks like him. Now you might know where I'm going with this. When we when we do Solus's personal quest, which is kind of random in hindsight, um, but uh, he says after his friend dies that something like that spirit will form because it was a very strong, strong-willed spirit, but it will likely not remember him. It won't be the exact same person, but it'll be something like it. My theory is that the bittersweet ending, the best Solus Mancers can probably hope for, Solus gets killed or whatever, but then because he is a very strong, powerful spirit-like creature, it's going to reform into something that won't remember us, but it is technically like Solus, and so we're going to have to take that spirit and make sure he doesn't do what he did again. <sighs> That's brilliant. Holy shit. And you really, I love the Joe Black reference, but also you're right about that quest where the spirit friend dies. That line is there, which sets it up. So it's really, it's not mm-hmm. just rampant speculation. I mean, there's some sort of evidence that, that, that that's possible, and also that Solus is aware of that. Mm-hmm. I God, okay. There's so much. There's so much of what you said that I like. Number one, that theory is brilliant. I think that that could be a decent compromise is having sort of a version or a remnant of Solus remain that he doesn't mm-hmm. remember. It would be great though if they gave you the choice because they set it up as he might remember. Do you know what I mean? Like you give mm-hmm. the player the choice, like kill him, completely destroy him, or or sort of give some remnant of him a chance to come back with with a with a risk that it becomes like soulless, soulless again. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. So you, also the, the, what you said about the compromise again, I think it's least likely from the story standpoint, but from the interweaving of gameplay and story, I think it would be really interesting if you, especially for soulless matches, if you gave the players that choice, right. Of like, it, it could be, it could turn into a really bad thing if you let him sort of um, uh, destroy the veil in one particular spot, but you won't have to kill him, right? Like, you mm. really put that onus on the players. From a player choice standpoint, I think that's what you described, I think, was a lot more dramatic from a player choice standpoint, whereas what I'm describing of him just, you know, either dying or dying, <laughs> it's just more like, <laughs> that's more from like a thematic purity standpoint. Like, that's where I think mm. the story is going. But I think I'm mm-hmm. thinking of it more from a linear storytelling standpoint, whereas you're laying out some more interesting things from a choice standpoint. Mm-hmm. So that I think that's 
and granted, who knows, in three years' time, we'll have another one of these dissecting our own theories, and we're talking about this one. Like, hey, remember when I had that cool theory and it ended up being a whole bunch and of people? we're going to be right, 100%. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Can we have the next the podcast where we do dissect our theories? Can we start off with that sound clip? <laughs> I was about to say, somebody please clip that. Just save that oh. sound bite, and then every time... Every time I, you know, we, we mention one of my theories that was wrong, Katie can play it. Like, nah, we're going to be right. 100%. <laughs> we're so smart. We got this. Solus kills everybody at the end of Dragon Age 4, and then you just play that. Nah, we're going to be right. 100%. <laughs> Solus gets killed in the first 10 minutes of the game. <laughs> hey, we're going to be right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, Jordan... Where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on YouTube at The Exalted March, uh, and as always uh, on Twitter and Instagram at The Exalted March. I'm Gildathon on YouTube and Twitter. I don't know why I'm stuttering so much. And I'm also <laughs> Gildathon on Reddit. Uh, and you can also find our streaming channel on Codex Added, where we're going to be wrapping up our Inquisition playthrough that's totally normal. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> Very, very, very uh, canon, I think, whatever. Anyway, uh, with that guy's direct Cheryl. So, okay. so hold on. You're talking about the article that we found before we started recording, of right? Yes. First of all, <laughs> first of all, this is, we're not. We won't give out the URL. Like, oh fuck! I just gave out the title. <laughs> <laughs> we have to bleep right, it right, out. Right, right. You, can, you can bleep it out with, "Oh, we're so right." <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll figure out a way. We'll figure oh out a way to So this blog, which is from 2009, but it looks like it's from 2001, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're so judgy. Oh, no, I, look, I'm judgy, but at the same time, like, there have been many iterations of me talking about video games online. Well, no, none of them have ever looked this bad. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I've had some pretty shitty looking blogs, but none of them were this bad. Um... <laughs> Even the crappiest ones, like I've always had some basic CSS skills. Like I've never, I've never used a, gen, I've never used a, a straight template. I've always taken templates and edited the, you know, edited the code. I can't code a website from scratch, but I can alter pretty decently. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this in defense. It visually, with I have no uh, experience with WordPress. It looks fine to me. Um, that like I have definitely been to WordPresses that decide like someone that kind of new CSS got together like I'm gonna make my custom one oh, and then it looks like bullshit. That's true. So like it doesn't look like bullshit. It's just boring. I I I would rather it be boring than bullshit. So I'm I'm not gonna give the shit on this guy from just having a boring. I one. Well, I agree. That's fair. And I and I, <laughs> no, you know what? I'm not gonna apologize to this guy. He's never gonna know it's me. <laughs> what? It's like fucking Matthias or something. <laughs> no, fuck it. If it's Matthias, he deserves it. You're talking shit about The Last Jedi. <laughs> Shout out to the guy who goes to all of our streams, Matthias. And I think he, he he's like fucking everywhere. We're just going to give him shit. Uh, now. Okay. For, okay. Anyway, what's, what about this this thing that Matthias uh, is Matthias, I love about. you, man. No, just kidding. <laughs> Um, okay, so we, we stumbled, as we were trying to prep for this episode, we stumbled upon this old WordPress site, which is like a generic looking WordPress site. It has an article that says, well, I can't, I can't even make fun of the title anymore because of the way that they spelled it. Okay, they spelled it in a way that's, I'm mm -hmm. not going to say it's leet speak, but it's sort of close to that. Um, which mm -hmm. if you know what leet speak is, like it's just a really, at this point, cringy holdover from again, like early 2000s internet. But anyway. They have that. Mm. Um, I commented that they had a blog roll, which if you remember, you know, blogging scenes from early to mid-2000s, you would try and link a bunch of other people to your blog, and they would link back to yours, and that was the only way that we knew to somewhat influence the Google page rank. It was like early SEO. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it's just like this old, old holdover from older sites. Um, 
and they basically have a bunch of reasons why you should be hyped for Dragon Age Origins. Uh, and you, in particular, <laughs> noticed the last reason. Yeah, so, uh, which there's a couple funny re- So let's, before we go into, like, the, the king one, let's kind of, like, go over some of yes. these. Um, my, uh, I, I just noticed that th- they have, like, a number of reasons on, like, why you should buy the game. One of them is voice acting. And uh, the quote is, uh, Bioware has effectively assured that no two characters will have the same voice. My man. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not so much. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and then following like, so is this the same set? So it is the same set of twenty guys doing a bunch of different voices of the whole game. Turns out the cast of Dragon Age Origins is a ridiculous. One hundred forty-four different individuals. Yes, and like you definitely can tell, like those twenty people that voice the same person over and over <laughs> again. Like fucking Colin's voice is like every other man. Yeah, but, yeah. No, it's it's whatever. Uh, one and um. One positive thing about Dragon Age Origins, and that the reason you should buy it, is that there's dra- there's a DLC at launch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, that is such a weird, like, this is such a oh weird juxtaposition from today that he's excited for that. Yeah. Like, that, t- today, nowadays, I remember distinctly people bitching about Dragon Age 4 it's going to have some sort, which not they haven't even talked about this. Yep. Like they're bitching about, like, oh, it's going to have, like, same day DLC and blah, blah, blah. It's fucking ridiculous. Mass Effect 3. Then, People yeah. flipped out over fucking Mass Effect 3 launch DLC. Yeah, where this guy's like, no, oh, it's great. You get to have new content at the same. No, man, times have changed. But my favorite one, the one that we definitely want to talk about, uh, I will read this in full. Seven. MMO follow-up. Not confirmed, but I bet my bottom dollar they will make one. It's just too, <laughs> gam- too damn good to pass up. My man. <laughs> My man, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, he bets his bottom dollar, though. Come on. <laughs> I, well, yeah. I, unfortunately, he's wrong, which thankfully. God, can you imagine? Which, okay, maybe this is probably a topic of another day. Like, how much people would flip their shit if Dragon Age made an MMO and like not in a good way. I mean I mean if I look we don't know we don't know what elements of Dragon Age 4 are gonna have online stuff. I doubt MMO, like I'm ninety nine percent sure. Um Well like Anthem is the closest to MMO and it's not quite an MMO, right, you right, know? Right. Like I don't think they're gonna have a full MMO. Yeah, I mean one day you, you never know. I mean look, Bioware makes MMOs. Right? Star Wars the Old Republic yeah. is an MMO. And, yeah. and at some point, people talk about whether or not that, you know, that property is maybe coming towards the end of its life, um, whether or not they replace it with another Star Wars thing. I don't know. But EA could say, hey, let's grow out the Bioware Austin team and let's make two MMOs. I mean, MMOs are dying, though. Like, can you think of a really healthy MMO right now? I don't know enough about MMOs. The only one I've ever played a lot of is The Old Republic. Mm. And people seem to like the expansions. Um, yeah. I, I, I like I just don't hear many positive things with MMOs anymore. Like the best I've heard is that the the Elder Scrolls one after a couple uh, after they essentially remade the game ended up being okay. Like that's the best I've heard. That's a good game actually. You know? As an Elder Scrolls fan, I, I I say I say I don't play MMOs. I've <laughs> tried a lot of them. Um, mm-hmm. I like that one actually. I, I, if I had more time, mm-hmm. I would go back to play more. But um, uh, all right, do we got anything else? Do we got anything else on the blog post? Now this. This episode has been like a word salad. I don't know, we like we tried we went in with one discussion and we end up like just fucking reaming talking about <laughs> my so talking about Dragon Age two and whoever did this blog post. Nah, we're gonna be right hundred percent. Woo.